Hey there, it's Miriam with uh, Connectedly, and I'm here with Marcus, who's the head of user experience at BMW. He's gonna run us through the new iDrive interface, which now has touchscreen functionality. Hi, Marcus. Hi, hi, I'm Marcus, and I'm gonna show you a little demo of what we've brought to the CES 2015 here from BMW. Wonderful, thank you. So, what we can see here, basically, is a new generation iDrive, what we could think of. So, it is ideas that we've gathered, and we wanted to actually demonstrate what we have uh, in the pipeline and what we have been thinking about. So, you probably all well known uh, our uh, iDrive controller with which we control the infotainment system over the past years. But we do have understood that there is a, a strong pull for touch interaction. Um, we see all the tablets, our iPhones, and touchscreens have become so much more common and better in technology that we have started thinking about how we can integrate actually touchscreens into the world of controller. Um, we do believe that our interaction, especially for driving, the controller is still very, very good, so we wanted to have a fully redundant system. Um, so you can control everything with the controller, but you can also go in and use uh, gestures, the touch gestures, as you have learned from all the devices you can touch, or you can swipe and actually touch on things. And we have also integrated what we've learned from customer feedback that we need previews of what is next in the hierarchical system. So if you get lost in the system, you always know what's up what's next and what is back. Um, we also wanted to actually use some advantages of touchscreen systems which are two-dimensional and not cursor-based. So I have a new message coming in. I see this up here in my status bar and I can directly touch the status bar. And I get my little notification center, which is also new, which gathers all the notification available in the cars um, from SMS to lost calls or traffic alerts or anything that the car wants to share with you. Um, we will have priority handling on this so that you're not overflowing with messages. Um, if your phone supports it, we will even integrate SMS or even email. It depends on the phone and the supplier. Um, that said, the notification center can also be reached, obviously, through our iDraft controller. What we also include, and this is a little magic we want to show you here, is a real gesture control, which then just makes the movement in the air and you can, for example, adjust volume. You can turn up and down by just moving your finger. So we're always looking for most efficient ways. Obviously, you can also turn the knob, but for somebody that doesn't want to do that, we would actually have this. We also indicate with this little gesture when you turn the knob, with this little indication, that you could use the gesture instead. So we have a fully um, gesture camera that has a little corridor down here monitoring my movements all the time, which then enable me to actually come up with gestures. So we've thought about a couple of gestures that might enhance the experience. And let's simulate an in incoming call. You're driving, your eyes are on the road, and suddenly a call drives you alert. And you say, oh, John, I haven't talked to John in a while. I want to talk to John, and I can just push and accept the call. And now I can talk to John, and I can be very talkative. And the gesture <laughs> camera will not pick up any false alarms. So this is context central, why we saw this is global in our system. It will appear in any screen. The context central um, gesture recognition, when I have a pop-up, in this case a call pop-up, I can also um, always use. Angelina, it's my mother-in-law. I really don't want to talk to her. I just shut her away, right? Talk to my neighbor. Right? No Angelina today. So we have gestures that will be very clear, identifiable, and very dedicated to the, to the context that I'm in. We also thought about things that we have, like, you know, might know our favorite buttons, our functional Yeah, that's a really great functionality. Where you can bookmark anything. We wanted to bring this to gestures as well. So we have a gesture dedicated here that is a functional bookmark. And now I've bookmarked it to bring me home. So now the navigation starts and will drive me home. Can you do that again? Of course. Um, let me show you something else which is additional. So I can freely guide or I freely take what I want on this gesture and I can turn it, for example, to display off. So it's free, freely programmable. And if I'm in this, I can say, hey, this is too light, just turn off the screen. So this gesture is very unique. It's clearly identifiable and it will do what I have programmed it to before. So going back, start guidance home would be then the gesture that takes me home if I just do this and I start the guidance. Please watch our screen, little homage to Las Vegas. We're not a live screen, but um, if we're here, we really want to Are you, uh, so are you doing numbers with your fingers? Is that what you're no, doing? Actually it's, we call it the two, but it's just two spread fingers. Gotcha. Very distinct. Doesn't happen very often when you do this in the car. Right. And imagine you're in the car, 
you're gesturing, while you're talking on the phone, while you're talking to your um, spouse next to you, or you start moving through this area and touching certain buttons. You don't want the system to, sh to have a false alarm. So we, our aim was to have the most robust gestures. Right. I got, I got a few questions for you. Maybe Please. you can... So is, first of all, is it a passive touch screen? It's a passive touch screen. And you're taking into account gloves as well? Because I know some of the new technology allows that? Um, I don't have full information. We will allow gloves to the extent possible. Sure. So and, and, you know, personally, I've driven several BMWs and I'm comfortable with iDrive, but there was a lot of moaning and groaning in the early days. A lot of people were saying, like, why not go with a touchscreen experience right from the get-go? So what made you decide to come back to that experience? Do you exactly think it's that, familiarity? Exactly that feedback. I, yeah. We, we do listen to our consumers and we believe there's enough consumers out there and we start investigating how can we make this as safe as possible to be the minimum driver distraction. And this is what we came up with. And we're still in the testing phase and we will make this experience just as glorifying as the other one, hopefully. Great. So that whoever wants to choose can choose. And for example, here in the communication, if I want to enter a number, we had the speller and dialer before. But our screen will also recognize immediately touch. if you touch ah, nice. and change to what is best for touch. Yeah. So the full redundancy uh, is what we are does it does in. the voice interface uh, also seamlessly integrate as a third modality or fourth if you can't raise gestures exactly the fourth um, we have full integration of um, voice for the cases that are necessary you will never be able to it won't be smart to use a fader change by voice of course like entering navigation entering a phone number you push this button you say navigate to 111 ocean boulevard in Lachlan Beach and it will just take you there. Great. We have one shot integrated. You can see it in any available car already nowadays, and mm -hmm. we will work on this as well. Great. Well, thank you so much for your demo, Marcus. And uh, thanks again. We're here at CS 2015 with Miriam with Connectedly. Cheers. You're more than welcome. Thank you.